Um, item number nine, two forty one here on the street, Rico Restaurant. We all know Rico. Frankie and Charlie um, has filed the application to the City of Boston Board of Appeal requesting a takeout license to add to the existing full service license to the Rico Restaurant at two forty one here on the street. Uh, good evening, my name is Bill Thoreau. I'm here representing Frank D. Pasquale and what's known as D. Pasquale Ventures. Uh, in particular tonight, uh, the Brico restaurant at 241 uh, Canada Street, uh, closest to the end with the postal license. Uh, as a postal license, it's really a zoning issue, meaning uh, the zoning for the building currently is for a sit-down restaurant. If you're familiar with it, uh, it's uh, considered to be white tablecloth service, uh, fine dining restaurant uh, will continue uh, exactly the same uh, after this is over and done with. Uh, the request is to uh, allow for takeout service uh, other than incidental to uh, the sit-down restaurant, meaning you go in and have a meal and you don't finish your meal and you take it out, that's uh, not a violation of any sort. But uh, two circumstances uh, are leading to this request. One is uh, in redoing some of his uh, kitchen space, Frank has brought in some very high-tech uh, ovens, uh, which are from France. Um, they're actually electric operated and they make uh, a wonderful bread uh, that he's been experimenting with. He's currently uh, tried 16 different breads, from olive breads to prosciutto bread, mm -hmm. uh, ciabatta, rustic, and wheats, and so on and so forth. Uh, and not only are they uh, only see in the restaurant itself where they're used, and some of you, I think, uh, have had the benefit of trying some when you've gone by uh, that he's given, uh, he's also now uh, using some in the pasta shop, he has a cross street as well. Uh, that's one, and I'll go back to it in a second. Uh, the second is simply that they have uh, any number of requests for their meals uh, as they certainly can be taken out as a convenience to local residents who may call uh, and ask for dinner uh, to be prepared to go down and pick up. And that would be included as a uh, takeout uh, situation for them. Uh, also, has been good for the business in terms of promoting people to come in to dine. Uh, when they can't dine, they can actually take the very same meal uh, home uh, by coming to the restaurant to pick it up. Uh, so th those two factors lead to the fact that the, the bread has driven this somewhat simply because the bread has been so well received. It's not like uh, other breads uh, that are used are uh, produced in the neighborhood uh, by other bakeries. Uh, it's quite different. It has a sort of more European flair to it. Uh, uh, we would invite you hopefully in the near future to try it. Uh, a question that's come up is uh, in the future, once uh, we have uh, presented this uh, in terms of building code issues to the city, meaning that uh, you can access uh, where the bread is made by going through a passageway next to the restaurant, which uh, we are not using currently until the city says that we can allow the public to access the passageway for the purchase of, of bread products. Uh, what's that mean? Is if you want takeout, you go to the restaurant that you would today, and you can order anything on the menu as a takeout item. Uh, you will soon potentially be able to uh, order the bread as well uh, if this is approved. Uh, we are hoping that uh, if the city approves the use of uh, passageway for uh, public access as opposed to simply access to the buildings, uh, that you'll be able to walk down the passageway for bread only, meaning you will still take your meals from the front of the restaurant, uh, whereas the bread would be served from uh, the passageway entry, uh, which is at the rear of the restaurant. Uh, simply only because it's easier, meaning it's difficult to take the meals from the passageway because the kitchen facility is in the main part of the restaurant. It's difficult to get the bread up from uh, the basement into the restaurant to take out. Uh, so uh, we will do that uh, if we have to, uh, if circumstances uh, allow, uh, which we believe they will. We don't see any reason why they won't. Uh, once we have all the construction completed, uh, 
trade systems aligned and stuff like that would be you know, finished now. So uh, that's why he's asking uh, for the takeout zoning. As I say, you will not notice a single difference about the restaurant. Uh, everything that uh, Frank uh, sells uh, for takeout, etc., is required by the city. Will be labeled so that you know where it's coming from. You know, bags, and boxes, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's generally required at any time you have food that's prepared for takeout. So, uh, once again, if uh, <coughs> if you buy the pasta shop, you can see the bread or try the bread. It's quite good. Uh, and it's quite different, so it's not like something else that uh, you might be able to buy. Did you want to add anything? I'm just saying no. Okay, we'll just start with the council for questions. Go, Daniel. Is there a, a, as part of the zoning requirements for the takeout license, mm -hmm. is there a requirement that a minimum of 10% of the restaurant sales have to consist of takeout food? Does that have any play in this, or is that accurate? Required? I thought maybe there was something in the zoning code that has to do with the No, I think the, the operative term is other than incidental. In other words, if you have a sit down restaurant within the category of takeout, uh, and as they say, someone doesn't finish a meal, or someone says, Oh, I'm going to visit my grandmother, can you do a lot of pasta? Uh, that would be considered to be incidental. So, if, if it's other than incidental, they recommend that you uh, apply for what's called 36A zoning, which is takeout. This clearly will not be a takeout restaurant, you know, as one envisions a sandwich shop or some of the other places that have recently opened. So this will be Brico, as you know, Brico. So just to clarify, you've got two different scenarios going on here. I can call up now and order a meal for takeout if, if this zoning gets passed. Yes. That's one issue. Yes. And the second issue is selling the bread. Yes. Now, my understanding is the bread is in a separate building from Brico it's separate? The, 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 the basement kitchen. Okay. Uh, Right now, as I say, we haven't received approval to allow people to go. You can walk this passageway uh, if you're facing it to the right of the building. You can walk through the passageway, go to the back, and go down a flight of stairs to where that part of the kitchen is. Mm -hmm. uh, we would hope that the city allows us to allow the public to do that. Okay. And just go in to buy the bread. If you wanted that meal, you would still have to go to the front of the restaurant. Okay. Is there anything else that's going to be sold out of the pizza or anything else? No. No, we no, no. His, his, so, so we don't confuse the issue. His current menu, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but his current menu does have pizza on the menu. It requires, in other words, since, it's, it's, since that pizza is baked on the first floor main uh, kitchen area, mm -hmm. you'd have to go to the front of the restaurant to get that. The pizza, right. Okay. So the only thing that you can buy going down that alleyway is the bread? Right. So you're going to be selling bread to the public then? Well, we're hoping that yeah. that becomes part of it, yes. But you could take the pizza and bring it to the back and sell the pizza, right? Well, you, you could, but as I say, if you, if you look at it, uh, if you go by the restaurant, uh, when you look in, you can see uh, uh, the oven that's in the main dining room. Uh, that's where the pizza is made, generally. So if you went in and sat at the bar or sat somewhere in the restaurant and you wanted uh, pizza as, uh, as a meal, it would be made there, it would be made in the, in the lower part of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So the dichotomy here is if you wanted that pizza, you're coming into the restaurant actually because then otherwise they'd have to make it there, send it downstairs, send it up the back. But if that space itself like develops really high demand, let's say, you know, is there a lot Possibility that there could be lines similar to modern pastry coming out the side, or like at that, you know, like Pompeii around like one one thirty at night, you get a similar line for pizza. I mean, is that a possibility yeah. that it will develop? No, it's not going to be. First off, it's only until you know, eleven o'clock that he does uh, any type of take on anyway. So it's not like one o'clock in the morning going, you know, going there to get a loaf of bread. I don't know how many people at one o'clock in the morning want a loaf of bread. Uh, he would expect that you would be able to get bread from sometime when it's ready in the morning, 7 or 8 o'clock, through sometime in the evening. No later than 11, but maybe earlier than 11. Uh, but the back would be a bread service. 
you know, so you're not going in for a sandwich, you're not going in for, you know, uh, something more you know, than a loaf of bread. So the hours of operation, I'm sorry, were seven, like around seven? Well, the hours, the, the restaurant operations are the same. Meaning, uh, our hours of operation, you, you haven't been doing lunch and you're still doing lunch. Nothing, nothing doing lunch. Okay. So you, you, the hours at the restaurant is uh, evening meal service that goes until 12 o'clock to 2 a.m. It's a 2 a.m. license in, in last call for meals. Meals is 11, uh, light service is until what? So would the takeout have some of those hours as well? You could, in other words, you could do that today. Whatever you can do today, I mean, if you went down to eat, uh, you can order something up until one o'clock in the morning. Uh, right, right. Not to say it's a more limited menu after eleven. Right. Eleven is the full menu that's served in the evening. Uh, from eleven to one, it's lighter fare, including the pizza and stuff like that, and you could take that up. So, what are the, so hours, the hours, yeah, just kind of, it would be the same oh, the, ba the bakery yeah. going back. Well, the takeout hours, yeah, not the, the bakery. The, the, the expectation hours. for the bakery portion of it would be sometime in the morning, it would be 7 or 8, you haven't sent an hour. Seven, yeah, eight, 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 eight. yeah, it kind of depends when that first bake is done and available. So it's usually somewhere around 7 or 8 in the morning. And then the latest it would be, would be 11 o'clock at night. That's when uh, all of that staff leaves. And the takeout hours? And the regular takeout would be the restaurant hours, which Trash you, okay. you can order up until 1 o'clock in the morning. Just to clarify, I know you made some reference a short time ago to the fact that this bread that you've been discussing is being sold right now out of the pastry shop on, I'm sorry, out of the uh, your other shop on your other shop? Yes. Okay. Did you need any type of additional variance for that, or is that just part of everything else that you sell at the pastry shop, at the pasta shop? No, the pasta shop is a retail store. It's a retail store. Um, the the bakery has that been fully inspected, fully permitted, and it meets fire code, and it's it's, it's legally standard building as it is. Okay. 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 Any other customers questions? <coughs> okay, I'll open up to the. I have two questions. One is how people know the bread fare is there? Is it going to be a sign in the window when they go in to the restaurant itself? Or they... I think they will put in the signs. Yeah, we have, I don't think we've given it. Uh, and this, I mean, we don't see this as, you know, a posi alley or a bonus yeah. situation. I mean, it's, it's intended to be first for the restaurant. Uh, the second response has been inquiries from other restaurants. Uh, but it will be available because, you know, Frank, inclusive to myself, having had, had the bread, they, the people will like it and will want to walk in. Walk in and the the bread. Around the Let me state oh, that also that also uh, many people have come to me from these restaurants that have bought from Paziali Clovis uh, or Seattle. I bought from Paziali for over 20 years, and as soon as I, and honestly, this has happened to me about 15 times already. And as soon as they tell me that they they buy bread from one of these restaurants, the first thing I've said is, I didn't lie to them, but I told them, I don't think I can produce it for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking in any way to hurt any one of those places. Paziali was so good for me did for so many years, just that now I'm doing it all in house. So my second question then was, are there people above you, and if you have people coming in and out till 11 o'clock at night, people sleeping, have you told them? Yes, and I, I also own the building there. Yeah. Yeah. The building happens to be vacant at the moment. Okay. The building's going to yes. be renovated. It's between you and Tresca? Is that where? Well, Tresca is What's it? It's part. between. That's only the front of Canova Street. You know, and then I own the building behind it. So the alley, though, where's the alley? In between right there. you and Tresca? In between, yeah. yes. That's I thought. Okay. I mean, as we know, you know with. The bakeries that we have, I, I don't know that, at least I don't see lines of Paziali. He probably sells more bread than anyone mm -hmm. in the lot, and I don't know that people line up to go get bread from Paziali. Well, the bogus they do. I mean, at yeah, night, late at night. Well, they're, they're, they're not buying bread from bogus. But still, they're still lining up there. And if it was, no, but, it was, uh, but they're lining up the sandwiches so they're and lining up the slices of pizza. Oh, people create noise. Yeah, you know, they're lining up for uh, uh, Rice Krispie treats. That, that's not really no, Right, but I'm just asking because. No, no, that's, that's why I'm asking, I'm answering uh, uh, Jonathan in terms of what the likelihood of the line is for a bread, for a, quote, bread bakery. I don't know, you know, in, you know places like Paziali or Pascaro that people line up to go buy bread, at least. 
maybe when I was a kid, you'd wind up with early Saturday morning, but it was a little depression. So. You remember that song? Only thing. Only thing. Only thing. Are you going to be selling to restaurants from there? Are they going to, are you going to deliver to them? If I do, I probably deliver. I, I know that I'm not. Did you do not neighborhood notification? Yes. Just a okay, can I have a copy of that? Sure. Okay. The address is yeah, Can I get it back from the office? Uh, Ron. Okay, and then make sure you email it to me. Yeah, Ron, yeah, well, Ron Le Duke uh, actually did. He's the uh, yeah. chief of operations. And, uh, he only gave me the one copy. So. So, to answer the concern about noise, and you talk about bulbs are lined up for sandwiches and pizza and things yeah. like that, is there a demand for bread up until 11 o'clock at night? Is there no, any reason to keep no, it all the, the, only people, yeah, the only people we envision coming any time in the evening would be somebody in the restaurant business. Well, that's why I'm asking. Why, why do you have the hours have to be open until then? Because at, at that point, if it was a restaurant, wouldn't you be delivering to them? It's, it's only because production is... Goes on the time. Sometimes people run out of bread at a certain time. It's happened to me a number of times. No, it's, to explain, the operation of the bakery uh, is such that the staff that would be working the bakery would be there at that time. They're, they're mixing dough, proof, what they call proofing for the next day's bakery. So if somebody wanted to buy something, Frank Stott was, we could buy it. At 11 o'clock, there's no magic. We didn't just take it out of the years. It's what's been going on while they're trying to test out the bread is that the, the baker has been coming in somewhere around 6, he tells me, uh, and he leaves anywhere between 9 and 11 in the evening. Go ahead. I just want to say I've been there uh, many times. And for me, personally, as, a, as an Italian, uh, Italian born, but more so as an Italian American now. Anytime someone wants to bring something that's done in a traditionally Italian way, something that is lacking in the North, then um, I think it's a great thing because it's an artisan thing. They're using all the old styles, all the old methods of making bread. The bread is absolutely delicious. The place is spotless. It's very clean. And to think that you're going to have a line of people looking for bread at any hour is just kind of really ridiculous. I mean, and for me as a restaurant owner, it's a great option for me to be able to, to go there and pick up four or five loaves of bread if I need it at eight, nine, ten. Because it happens, you run out. But I tell you, I suggest you guys go there. You should have brought some bread. The bread is really, the, the bread is bread that they were making in the North End years ago. It somehow has lost its way. But I think we should always support and be happy when something is done that represents our Italian cultures, especially in a way like that, a clean, Beautiful place. Mm -hmm. and if you do, uh, look for Frank. He'll, he'll take you down the place. Uh, I was fascinated when I first saw it. I mean, the ovens are just incredible. And they're, they're actually gorgeous to look at. The glass front, uh, they're very unique, as I say. They're, uh, they're, they're run on electricity, so there's no gas and there's no smells other than the, the bread smell. Uh, and it's a rather relatively small space, so it's not a the kind of space that you can go in there for some reason hang out if you know what I mean. You can barely you know, get the operation done and then have a little space in the front where someone can you know, buy some bread. So. Do you have to get a special permit to use that alleyway for tractor? Not that we're aware of. Not that we're aware of. As we're saying is, um, the city's looking at it in terms of the novel things of access and egress. So once they tell us what they decide, it may turn out that we can't use that rear entrance, but we're letting you know in advance that uh, our preference would be to have if someone want the loaf of bread, not to go into the restaurant for the loaf of bread, but rather to go through the back. And did you say, Frank, you're going to use the same for your takeout menu as your current menu? So anything on your menu? Yes, you can just what's on my menu. But you can take I'm anything. Not I'm not making sandwiches. No, I understand, yeah, but, but whatever's on your menu, you can, yes. you can call in and take out. Okay, Ian, yeah, did you have a question? Yes, I have a few questions. Um, and story on North Marshall Street. Um, will all of your customers be arriving on foot or will they be driving up? And where is your driver? I would assume that nobody's driving up to take you fresh bread. I hope not. I mean, I, I would think well, that they're only coming on foot. Are you going to be advertising your bakery in the No, I'm not doing any advertising whatsoever except for my website, which is my original legal website, which you'll look into in that portion. It says bread as well. And 
How often will you be having flour deliveries? Excuse me? How often will you be having flour deliveries? As, as much as any other business that I have with Rico, they would deliver at the same time. And, and we, we've been making bread in Rico with the brick oven for so long. We've been making bread for, for the last 19 years. And I don't think it would change one, one iota. And where is your trash being stored? Where is your trash? trash, trash in the same place it's been stored for the last 19 okay. years. It's uh, right behind uh, the Panateria, which is right behind that. And we have uh, eight tubs over there, which you know sometimes they use, sometimes they're not. And we have a daily trash pickup. Uh, we have a daily trash pickup. And if we need anything more, we call them up and they come and do a, a favor for us uh, during uh, the morning. They come by and they take whatever else we have. But it's a daily pickup. So all your um, trash um, storage facilities are inside or in the alley? In, in my property, only on my property. No, inside the buildings or in the alley? No, not inside. What? Not inside. They're no. not inside the building. No. I, you've been there. I, I think no, you've been there. In the still... last meeting, when he was expanding, he said he was going to have a special facility inside the building for trash. Well, it, it, it's, it's, well it's held. In other words, the operation of the restaurant is the, the trash is held in the building while the restaurant is operating and then brought to the barrels for removal. But the barrels are outside. The barrels are no, not kept outside. in the restaurant. Well, he seems to imply that everything will be inside, stored inside the building. No, there's not enough. Don't and, and if you go by again, if you want to look at the passageway, it's never look better. It's all... Not only that, just to just, uh, tell you a couple of things that I did on that whole passageway, which was at one time pretty infested. I, I think it was pretty infested. Uh, what I did is I broke all the bottles, the wine bottles that we had. I had it all placed down had it all re-cemented, everything was re-cemented, the whole place all around, it was totally rat proof. We covered every single hole, we wired ladded every single wall that we had. We even did the building next door, uh, you know, the, uh, the Truscott building, I don't know if there's a little that. We, I, I did it all at my expense, the whole Hamill building, he was so, he was amazed at the work that I did there. I cleaned that whole area up so, so I, I know that at least this particular building that I bought is is totally rat proof, you know. And I and we work on that day in and day out because you know, we do have a problem here and not that. And the trash is put into double bags. It's put into containers with uh, lids, and it's taken out every single day. I have a like I said, I have a a trash uh, pickup every single day, you know. And we have a a, a pest. Uh, uh, check up uh, once a week. We don't we don't wait once a month. We do it once a week. So yeah, we we would point that Frank purchased the three buildings that the Nobles own, which are the two buildings in the front in Hanover, and the building in the rear uh, in what's called Fort Alley. Uh, and Frank has been working on those buildings since he purchased them. And once again, we invite you to go look. The properties never look better, uh, and will continue to be better since. The tenants in the Boyd Alley building will be Frank's tenants. Uh, needless to say, he's made the passageway and alleyway very attractive so that it looks more uh, inviting, more you know, uh, typical uh, closing area like Beacon Hill has a lot of these areas, but not that it doesn't have as many, but uh, you won't want to go down a dock uh, for Bodie Alleyway if you were renting an apartment there, but now if you go down there, it's well lit. It's decorated. Uh, it's all re-cemented, as he says. There's flowers. It's beautiful. That's just back there on my property. It's, it looks like you really want to live there. And uh, and honestly, I'm trying to set up a, a staple of what all the buildings in the North End should look like. And I'm spending so much money. I've spent every penny that I have in making this building, you know, just a, a key uh, look for the whole North End. So it, I know that as soon as someone in the North End does a beautiful job on their building, and the person next door does the same. And I think that this will set a trend for, for what the North End should look like. And I'm very proud of being North End. I'm, I've said it, uh, I've lived in the North End for many, many years, and now we've moved into the North End permanently. I am from Marblehead. I, I had a home in Marblehead for 19 years, but I've always had an apartment here in the North End. So I, I consider myself a North End and not a Marbleheader. 
and as Frank mentioned, Frank lives in fighting for principles. So. And Victor, how was the break? I knew you were going to tell us. That's why you, you were raising your hands. Of course. Yes. <laughs> First, a disclosure. I eat the bread of the Panino Express, and it is delicious, mm -hmm. especially the ciabatta. Um, but I have two questions. Sure. One is, um, isn't the sale of bread uh, a retail, uh, that is, does it matter whether you sell it from the bakery or you sell it from, from the shop on Cross Street? Doesn't that come under uh, the, the retail section of, of the zoning code? Sale of you... bread is a retail sale. So the re requirement of a takeout is separate from what you've been telling us about the bakery? It's, it's the combination. We think what's going to happen is that uh, we had made a decision to do the takeout uh, as it was. Uh, for example, the restaurant isn't, isn't quote, zoned as retail, but we can apply and as of right without having to go to the Board of Appeal. Mm -hmm. Also have retail sale as part of the restaurant or so. I don't want to confuse you with necessary, but you know what I'm saying is, since it's an allowed use, if we said that this was a sit-down restaurant and retail sale of rent, we could do that without going to the Board of Appeal. Frank's feeling was that since his takeout business is getting more popular in terms of request, that he would do it as a takeout request. So that's why he's simply adding the takeout to it, and it covers the two items mm -hmm. at the same time. But if you were only selling bread right. and not taking out, you wouldn't need to go to the Board of Appeal. Correct. Okay. But two things are allowed. Okay, second question. Inclusive of the baker. In other words, bakery's allowed, and retail sales. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Uh, second question. Will you have some type of delivery? Truck, van, no. uh, small, no. uh, motorized vehicle, no. which will exacerbate the traffic problem no. to the meals. already right. existing on Hanover Street. We have no intention of doing that. Again, Frank will tell you, he is not using a service for takeout, has no intention, will assure you of that, put it in writing or whatever else. That, that's not the intention of the take yeah, it's simply to keep the business affairs of the restaurant uh, working as well as they do today. It's popular, has lots of requests for the takeout, uh, and the suggestion being it's, made to them is so to include that so that it doesn't become an issue other than, uh, as I mean, answer the question here, other than being considered incidental to the sit down service. So okay. wine the bread after they taste the bread basket if they they want, to, they want to buy the bread. Yeah, when, it, when that happens, Frank, are they going to have to go around to the back? Or are they going to be no, able to buy the bread? No, the way to, okay. it's right in the kitchen. You go in the kitchen and you get the fire. Okay. You know, they'd be added to the check. Right? Or right the check they already have. And they, yeah, you'd be recommended also to walk over to the pasta shop. <laughs> no, I, well, he means that because only because of, if you went during the middle of the day, there's no one at the restaurant because Serving. Right. So you really have to go to the pasta yeah. shop to get it because yeah. right now we're not allowing anyone to go into the passageway until we get some, some direction. And you're going for for the uh, zoning board of appeal on November 1st at 9:30. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, November 1st at 9:30. Anybody else have any questions, comments? So it's not what I had originally said that you're looking for approval from the board for an application for a takeout license. It's, it's, not, changed it's not a license. It's not a license. Right. It's, it's, is it's, there any such thing as a takeout license? There isn't. Uh, There's a CV it, license, it is, but not. Uh, to, 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 more of a, a layman's term. Okay. To, to call it a takeout license. It's, it's an additional zoning okay. for the, the restaurant. There's, there's no license that's issued. I think it has a different connotation that you can take out all of a sudden. Yeah, it's in other words, you know, your license is really a CV, a common victualless right. license, which he already holds. So uh, it's, it's a change in the zoning that really changes the license that's hanging up in the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, my my biggest concern was, you know, is that it would be more than just bread out the no. back, and we just you were sure. No, and, what, and with, yeah. as, you, as you're saying, there's no intention to do sandwiches. There's no intention to do bread. Because that would change. I mean, that would change the yeah. Anybody else? Other questions? Okay. Thank you. From what I've heard, I think Victor uh, 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 Frank has done an awesome job of, of showing us that he continues to run a high class operation. Everything he's done that I've ever seen. It's been top shelf, and I, I really like the fact that he's feeling responsible to the surrounding neighborhood and trying to create an example for the 
for the neighbors um, and neighboring landowners. So I applaud you on that. And so I will definitely vote in favor of this. I second. Well, we haven't. We don't have a motion yet. <laughs> you can't second. Oh, we don't have a motion. I'd be happy to, to move. Okay. Uh, I'll make it. Okay. Well, let's, we need. A, we need a motion. She's moving. I'm making it. Okay, sorry, I'm making a motion to support the takeout. Okay. okay, all in favor? Okay, Janine, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes, I'll give that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, yes, you've got my email. Please? Yeah, it's my name. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.